<clears throat> okay, guys. So um, today we're going to be looking at uh, creating a social media marketing strategy. Um, it's interesting that uh, we're, we're coming across this topic. It's coming up more and more. And I just want to kind of start off by sharing with you my my personal stance. Now, I'll be the first to admit, um, as a contractor, social media has always been a burden to me rather than, um, you know, something that I I really inspired to do well. Um, I felt that it was just another thing that I had to do. Um, in the last uh, year or two, I've, I've really learned to embrace it and see the ROI. Um, as, as I've explained to everybody here, um, I am very much of the uh, direct response marketing um, strategy where if I can't directly record, you know, what I've put out in money and what I got back in return, I'm not doing it. Um, with one exception, of course. Um, and that's going to be our social media. And I'll explain to you exactly why and kind of, um, you know, where I see the benefits uh, really playing out for my business and seeing them, you know, across with other people's businesses. So most people here at one point or another will um, at one point attempt to run ads for their business. Okay. Um, benefits of those really quick, good turnaround. You can get really good ROI on them. A uh, perfect example of direct response where we're paying the play. Okay. Now where it makes a significant difference um, is in the quality of your social media content. All right. Why? Well, think about your own buying behavior, right? When you see an ad or you see, you know, something that you're possibly interested in, what do you do? You probably check them out, re research them, you check their social media. Um, and I've really seen a huge, huge jump in organic. So those are um, leads that are coming to us that we're not paying for. So when I'm running a paid campaign, I can always kind of count on a good, solid uh, return on investment or lead cost, however you want to look at it. But matched with the social media strategy, um, it enhances that dramatically. And then we see a big, big jump in organic traffic, organic being free. So obviously my ROI for the whole campaign goes through the roof. Um, and we're regularly bringing in, you know, one to seven returns, one to eight returns. Um, you know, we've been doing it pretty long time. So I want to go through it today and I want to kind of show you guys some ways. So some of you guys are making your own content. Some of you are, are about to, um, but I'm going to really try and make this as simple as possible. Okay. Um, so you'll, you'll let me know. Um, you can use ChatGPT, And again, I'm going to kind of put a, an emphasis on this and I want you guys to really take it to heart. Um, Learn to crawl before you run. If you're going to use ChatGBT and you don't have an infrastructure for creating content, it's going to be a mess. It's not going to speak to the, the customer you want to speak to, and you're not going to have any consistency with it. And consistency is a big, big um, important factor here. Um, too many contractors I see all the time that are just posting stuff that has really no point to it. It doesn't speak to their offer. It doesn't bring any character to their business. They're just posting pictures. Right. And unfortunately, those pictures go um, unseen and no one cares. Right. So for a lot of guys, they've gotten into the habit. Some have actually gotten really good at it. Um, I have to say that the social media quality has improved dramatically, especially in my market. Um, but I'm seeing that pretty consistently across the board. And I'm sure you guys can see um, anyone that's, you know, not living under a rock that, you know, social media has become a pretty big deal. It's consuming a lot of our time. So. Um, with that said, we want to really think about quality and consistency to, to get the results that we're looking for. So um, we need to start with a plan. Okay. Now, the way that I'm uh, going to present this to you guys is we're going to talk about what we have to do before we start creating. Oh, my God. Sorry. Just give me a second here. It seems my. All right. There we go. So we really want to make this as easy as possible. And here's here's two strategies or three strategies, really. All right. Um, number one is we don't want to be in a situation. Um, hold on, hold on. Let me mute this. Uh. I don't know who that was. Okay. Seems to be good now. 
Um, so we don't want to be in a situation where we completely rely on an outside person to do our content. And there's a couple of reasons why. Um, number one is um, if you just expect somebody to come into your business and understand your story, understand um, you know what kind of customer you're speaking to, um, understand all those things without like actually you know investing and learning about that in your business, you you will be very disappointed. Um, it does take a lot. Um, and again, ChatGPT doesn't know those things either. Um, so a lot of uh, companies out there are just generating very generic um, content. And unfortunately, um, the bar is definitely going up on the what kind of quality you have to produce. So my recommendation in here is that, you know, A, we don't just completely outsource without having at least a little bit of insight and being able to pass it off to someone. So hopefully this framework is going to help you if you are working with someone that's going to create and generate your content. Um, the other option, of course, you can be fully responsible for your own content. And I'm going to go through tools and stuff that you can use if that's your, um, if that's something that you enjoy doing and that's something that gives you energy. I don't recommend that if you don't um, get energy and you don't enjoy doing it, that you create that as a, um, a regular task for yourself. This is definitely something you'll want to delegate. Um, and the third option, obviously, is, again, having us do your content. Most of you guys, I think we're doing a lot of your, your content. Um, we still want input. We still want um, to be able to capture, and we're constantly kind of chasing you guys down for, for different stories. Um, so today's um, framework is basically going to walk you through how we're doing it. Um, and then it's going to help you guys to kind of clarify how you can do it on your own or have somebody else do it for you. All right. So if we were to actually, you know, put our time into this and energy, and this is for everyone, I, I didn't make anything super fancy. I made everything very straightforward in this workbook. If you follow it step by step. All right. Um, by the end, you'll be able to use chat GPT to actually create your content. So very first thing is we've got to understand our, the scope of our journey. All right. So a big thing is understanding the message that you want to send to the market. All right. Just sending anything out there without like really, you know, putting some thought process into like what core message you want to send, what, you know, what does it say about your brand? What are you trying to get people to do um, will result in very flat, um, boring and confusing content. Um, and when I say confusing, I want to kind of emphasize this. You can confuse the algorithm where it would never feed your content to anybody. Okay. If you don't have a good message and good copy, um, and copy is the words that you use, all right? Um, chances are your content will never be seen by anybody other than your mom and maybe some close family friends, and that's no fun, all right? So we all want to get our content seen. I mean, what's the point of making it if it doesn't get seen, okay? So we want to think about first, what is our core message, all right? So I made some some templates here for you. So a lot of this, um, again, you some of you may have it already. Um, some of you may need to look at it, but we want to really figure out our mission, our vision. All right. Those are really, you know, important things that we can start to, you know, create content around. Um, and we want to think about the keywords that um, belong in our core message. So, you know, we'll use a, we'll use an overused words, things like we work with integrity. Okay. These would be core values that maybe you have. All right. And you'd want those kind of keywords and that kind of language being used when we're designing our content. OK, so um, and again, I, I, I highly recommend that you guys be slightly creative here, um, saying that you do quality work. Not so good at differentiating yourself with that. Um, and it really kind of sends a, a, a double negative message to the market saying, you know, that, you know, again, that that's sort of like a. Um, like a, an above average thing. I think everybody, nobody's out there saying, hey, we do, you know, piss poor work or we do shit work, right? No one says that. So everybody's saying the same thing. We do good work. Okay, great. Let's expand a little bit on that. Let's think about the client journey. Let's think about their experience um, and start to kind of capture those keywords, okay? Get those themes that you want to um, portray to the market. And, and again, this is very personal to your business. You know your customers best. Um, and you really want to, again, be clear about what is the core message that we're trying to bring. All right. Um, we've also been talking a lot about offers. Okay. So this is a good place to really start to lock in your offers. All right. I can't stress to you enough. 
Um, every piece of content you should be you are making should be in support of your core offer. What it is that you do, it should be explaining it. It should be, um, you know, dealing with common objections. It should be, um, you know, do, showing before and afters. Like there's a million ways, but you need to be always communicating what it is that you do. Okay, and why somebody should choose you over anybody else they're comparing you to. All right. So this is a little exercise. Again, like I said, I'm going to go through the whole exercise um, explaining it, but you know, we're not going to go through all of the sheets fully in depth. So this is meant for you guys, whoever is interested, whoever really wants to take their content to the next level um, or really feel secure about delegating it to kind of go through this workbook. So the next, um, we really want to do a social media audit. Has anybody here done a social media audit before? No, I have, but um, I doubt it's to the level you're going to share. <laughs> Actually, I, I took my I took our inside social media audit and I cut like 90 percent of it. So really, I, I'm going to bare bones here because I work with contractors. So I wanted to like only use the most specific things. So let's nothing is like I could have written entire workbooks about this one thing. But really what a social media audit is, is just looking over what's being generated already or what's already been created all right and i'm going to look at a couple things and and a lot of this is just about like communicating right so um you know what channels do you actually are you actually signed up for all right you want someone to come in and create content for you or post content for you um do you even have the social media platforms do you even know what they are right i i get run into that a lot the guys don't realize that there's you know, five or six pretty predominant social media platforms that we can post across, okay? So we want to come in and really analyze what we have. And a lot of this is about documenting, right? I expect that you're going to hand this off. This is not um, a job of a CEO, um, unless they really enjoy it and they get a thrill out of it. That's the only time I would recommend that you be heavily involved in the heavy lifting of it. So, a content analysis. So we want to look at the videos, the, you know, the images. And when I say analysis as well, you can look at other people that are really killing it in your market and people that you see um, that maybe are competitors or maybe they, um, you know, there's somebody that you follow that does the same type of work you do. All right. And have a look at what their, their style is. Have a look at their images, their videos, their articles, right? Um, the cool thing about social media um, is that in most platforms, it allows you to kind of use other people's ideas. You don't have to be overly creative. I hate to say it, but I mean, at the end of the day, like somebody's already doing it at a very high level. If we were to just use some of their content um, and you guys see it in social media too, again, unless you're living under a rock, um, people are reusing it. It's actually encouraged, right? So we don't want to reinvent the wheel if we don't have to, but we really want to start to kind of look at what's working, what's not working, um, if you've been posting a lot of content, what's your likes, shares, comments, um, you know, average posts. And again, what's your consistency, right? If you're just, you know, posting ever so often, again, that's not really a strategy, right? That's something that's not going to really get you the results that you want. Um, you know, and one of the easiest ways is kind of look at the top three posts. If the top three posts are like a personal story about or something, you know, off off your offer it doesn't speak to your offer then you know chances are we don't really have a strategy at all um and we gotta we gotta do some work to to build one okay uh jenny uh, yeah uh by consistency uh is there like an optimal number that we should aim for weekly daily monthly bi-weekly depends on your goals okay so if you're looking to speak to um, if you're looking to drive organic traffic, okay, now there's businesses out there that literally they're making millions of dollars and they only produce organic traffic. They have no ads, they have nothing else. Okay, that's going to take a level of sophistication and consistency. So they're posting three or four times a day, right? They're using very high quality content, like their investments being made in content. Okay. <laughs> now, again, do we all have that bandwidth? No, probably not. All right. So my recommendation is at least we're making three or four posts a, uh, a week, um, you know, again, that are very specific on brand, on topic and quality over quantity. OK, you got to remember, people will see this stuff. Uh, they again, properly posted. They're going to see it for years to come. OK, 
So if we learn to make really good quality content, um, we can do a little bit less. So if we're doing three quality posts a week, I'm going to say that that's enough. And that's certainly getting us results, um, you know, and we can always pick it up, right? Wait to see what your results are. But the big thing is understanding how content gets gets fed into feeds, how content gets viewed, right? How you get out of that, uh, how the algorithm sees your value, okay? Um, and we'll talk a little bit about platforms. But again, like I said, we wanna kind of go over, and a lot of this is more or less just figuring out exactly where you are and what we have to do next, okay? So I've designed this one in, in particular to be something that you would potentially hand off. Okay, but it's important that you see these things and that you go through and understand and then you're and then you're expanding and handing to somebody that you can work with rather than just, you know, blindly giving it to somebody that has no idea. Okay, so let's move to our next step. Oh, that's my document again. Okay, so now we want to really kind of figure out um, who we're going to design our content to direct towards, okay? So what are their interests? What are their habits? Um, you know, especially on social media, okay? So this is slightly different than a persona that we would do in general, okay? So a lot of you guys that have been working with me for a while, you know, we do, we're big on personas, target markets, and understanding your avatar, understanding your client. Um, but what I wanna really encourage you to think about is what does your persona look like in these social media platforms? Because they do change, I assure you. All right. If you were to go to my my channel um, and check out our social media, um, although it speaks to our overall per, like avatar, it's very much geared to a millennial down. OK. Um, and again, we talk about technology. We talk about, you know, things that would be interesting to them because that's my target market. It's like 45 and under, um, you know, most 55, 60 year olds aren't really, you know, viewing enough of it to, to get the whole story where I know for a fact, and we, we can track this with these is that my avatar is slightly younger when I'm, when I'm on social media platforms. Okay. So I made this pretty easy for you. Again, we're going to go through, you can, you know, check the boxes. Um, if you've joined our program, you've already done this. So I don't want to create more work for you. Um, but it also helps, again, if you're going to get marketing, if you're going to get clear about your offer, guys, you've got to do this stuff. You've got to be so, so specific these days because everybody's attention span is very small and you only have a very short window of time to make an impression with them. If you're trying to speak to too many people or you don't have a specific person at all, um, you're just, you're not going to be heard. You're not going to be seen. All right. And more so on social media. All right. Um, a lot of these are just strangers, right? Think about your own social media habits, and that's going to kind of help you to guide your um, guide the understanding. So, Eco Emily, twenty eight, um, ideal client for an eco conscious electrical contractor. Uh, she's passionate about sustainable living and regularly seeks out energy efficient solutions. Um, Emily often shares tips on reducing energy consumption, highlights green electrical upgrades uh, like solar panels and smart home systems. I meant to say that's the contractor, but you get what I'm saying. Okay. So if I was directing my content towards Eco Emily, all right, I'm going to be, I'm going to be really considerate of that, this kind of content, right? I'm going to use those kind of posting patterns to get their attention. All right. Um, and that may be a small audience. That may be a small niche. You can actually speak to multiple personas if you choose to. All right. So if you have some specific personas, again, I definitely have this eco green persona um, that we we've identified. So we have a few varied posts that is meant to engage with them. Okay. So now we've talked about this before in terms of analyzing sediment and stuff like that, but I wanted to kind of bring it down and really make it a little bit more specific to how we can utilize like Google uh, tools, Google trend. Um, has anybody used any Google trend tools before? Anybody ever come across those? No. Never heard of them. Okay. So pretty cool. Um, so what Google allows us to do um, is essentially we can, um, see what's like, what's trending. So like you can ask Google questions in the, it's an actual app that they have. All right. That's going to allow you to see like 
you know, up and coming things. So like the search volume of certain uh, search terms that may be related to you. So I've got like notifications. So anything that's related to like metal roofing or anything along those lines. Um, and what it allows me to do is really look at the trend line over time. So I'll, you know, this has been really big for us. We've been watching metal roofing searches just, you know, go through the roof, right? We know it's a, an exploding market. I can look at that in, in my own local area, but I can also look at that in a national, you know, overall level. And I can go back in time as well to compare, you know, am I actually onto a trend? So think about these offers that we're discussing, okay? If you want to validate your offer before you spend money in marketing, I highly recommend that you do, all right? So the worst thing to do is to have a an assumption or an idea or a feeling, all right, and then spend a bunch of cash to try and pursue that when really nobody cares about it, all right. And then I've shared with you guys in plenty of other situations where that can happen. Um, I, again, this helps you to not waste your time. You want to invest your time in first validating what it is that you're trying to communicate or validating even avatars or trends. Um, and this is a very helpful tool to do that. Um, the other uh, the other method, which again, super easy, create yourself a little survey, call your customers, ask them, okay? Again, it's just, there's no way, like a easier way to do it than, than I can explain. And we do it all the time. We do it even when we're um, taking intake calls, when we're like, everything is a, an opportunity to collect data, okay? Data is super important in marketing um, because once again, um, if you're doing marketing properly, um, you're not gambling. All right. It's not, it's not gambling. Um, it can be if you don't do your research and you don't understand these things. Um, but you're making calculated, you're making calculated investments, right? Everything can be tracked by data. It's a very highly data driven process. So we want to think about how our system can help to serve that. Right. So what are we asking when we have an intake call? Where's that information being shared to? Right. Um, and again, if anybody's interested, I have tons of these surveys that we've done with our clients. They're really they're they're easy. They can be slid in without it feeling like a survey as well, but literally could lead to a million dollar opportunity. Right. If we get a better offer, if we, you know, validate a, um, a profit maximizer offer where we can, you know, a, offer an additional thing that increases our ticket price on every job like that's huge. Right. But before you do it, before you spend money and energy and everything else and then have it not work out, we want to validate these things. We want to actually have a conversation with the people who are going to buy that stuff because they they're going to tell you if it's good or not. Does that make sense? Anybody totally lost at this point? No. OK. So we're, we're, we're on track then. Cool. All right. So I've also given you guys a uh, survey template in here. OK. Again, um, a lot of it can be, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory, but you want to figure out what your client's um, social media habits are, right? What platforms are they using? Um, a big one that we've just discovered, and it's only been in the last um, about two, two, three weeks, is um, this Pinterest. I, I, I'm blown away. My, my ad cost on Pinterest is like $4 a lead. Now, I do get a lot of like crazy, like people from the States and stuff, but it but think about it. People go there, especially like higher end people, when they're looking for design ideas, architects, engineers, like they use this platform for like inspiration. All right. So if you're doing very high end work or you're doing something unique and, you know, that might be a platform that you could focus on. And then w the way their ad platform set up is it allows you to now target anybody in that local area that may be using it. OK, now it's not for everyone. Um, again, I recommend kind of focusing on the bigger platforms first. Don't be, you know, I'm I'm I have the budget to kind of experiment with things. Um, if you don't, then stay in your traditional channels with it. But another great place to go if you're looking for images, if you're looking for ideas. Um, but that's a, a good example of a gap that we found just by surveying our customers. Right. Just by asking. OK. The next thing is, um, you know, their content preferences, um, asking them, right? So how many of you guys have asked when somebody calls in, you know, if they seen the ad, what was it about the ad that got your attention, right? They're going to tell you, they're going to openly tell you what it was. Well, maybe it was, uh, you know, that they thought you did really high end work and that they could trust you. Okay, cool. 
All right. So we know that that kind of ad is actually resonating with our ideal client. Okay. Um, same thing goes. Um, most people may or may not be actually most people wouldn't be aware of this, but content fatigues, ads fatigue. All right. And sometimes it's hard for us to kind of figure out where lead flow problems are coming from. Um, the first place you're going to see it is really in your in your ads, in the in the creatives that you're putting out to the market. Um, and it's always very beneficial if you're constantly testing ideas and and different you know content pieces because ads are expensive to run very expensive and if you get them wrong even fractionally or they fatigue it's going to cost you a lot more money to you know getting those up and going and getting those optimized again um we can use our organic channels our organic posting when people like and share and you get feedback from your clients about that content that's becomes the piece that you'll want to use in your ad in your ads next why because it's being validated all right versus you taking a risk on you know brand new stuff we've already got some validated content people loved it you know we're going to share more of that and and it speaks to our audience and again it's a lot just about testing small things um that end up to big big results okay same with their influence uh like who are they who are they following again most people are following certain influencers most people do research now believe it or not especially the younger generations they use you know the social media platforms to research their you know what they're interested in um again we're seeing less and less traffic going through google although it's still number one um but the intent in social media um is far more profitable and uh, maybe i'll explain that really quickly to you so um for you guys that have experience uh um, advertising on Facebook. What tends to happen is that you're getting a passive, um, um, non-intentful uh, prospect at first because they're not necessarily on Facebook to find a contractor. You disturb them and get in front of them and it kind of sparks their interest <laughs> and they click on your ad, okay? Um, versus Google where they have the intention, they're problem they're aware, awesome. solution aware. Oh, hold on one sec. Oh, where'd you go? Okay. Yeah, so they have the intent of actually finding that. That that's good or bad, good and bad. Okay, and the reason that um it's it's good is that you're getting you know the top three percent of the market that's problem aware, solution aware. Okay, they're actively looking to buy now. All right, for most of us, um, I would say probably seventy to eighty percent of contractors, maybe even higher. Um, that's that's where they they are trying to hit. Well, the problem with that is everybody's trying to do it. So the ad cost goes way, way up. It's very expensive to market there. Um, and there's no guarantees because demand goes up and down in that 3%. Below that, um, there's roughly about 20 to 30% that may be problem aware, but not solution aware or solution aware, but not you know problem aware. And they're not necessarily looking to buy. Okay, so Facebook, um, you know, TikTok, all of these other platforms, um, are really, really great at finding people that are, you know, in one of those stages. So they're they're more likely to be researching or maybe you've hit a nerve and they feel like they, that you have a solution to something they've been trying to solve, okay? So the intent is different. Um, it also means that you have to work a little bit in terms of building your reputation and getting them to be offer aware, problem aware, and then, you know, actually taking action with you. Okay, so just to kind of explain the difference there between um, between the platforms, and again, um, for for me personally, um, those platforms and the social media platforms, I get a huge, way better ROI than I do from Google, um, just because I don't, you know, again, we nurture, we get like we can buy leads at a much lower cost, um, and we can also fill our pipeline three, six, nine months down the road versus Google, that's just basically one and done, and you're comp everybody's competing for that same person. Um, it uh, it does come with a much higher ROI and you find a lot more price shoppers or price sensitive buyers I find from from those searches, unless you're, you don't have much competition. Okay. So now we want to talk about, you know, understanding and validating again, what are people searching for? What are people interested in? What is like, you know, we talked about trends. Um, so I actually love this tool. I use it all the time for, for researching clients offers, for researching and understanding, again, what are the, what's the search volume, 
all right? If I were to create some content or create an ad, all right, um, what is it that my consumer wants to solve, okay? Um, so this allows you to go, it's called Ask the Public, um, and you basically can put the search terms in that you're thinking of, and it's going to give you all the different um, searches and tell you how, what the volume is, right? So you might say, you know, if you're thinking of your ideal prospect, all right, um, let's, let's say you have an assumption that they are eco-friendly, okay? So you would type in like green, green metal roofing, all right? Lo and behold, people ask questions to Google, right? We all do. So this is going to actually tell you um, what what those searches are and which are the most optimized questions to solve. And one of the easiest ways to create content, take the most commonly answered asked questions and answer it. Simple, right? Create a quick video. Doesn't have to be, you know, uh, extravagant, but just answer that question for your audience because you can validate that, right? There is a huge volume search for, you know, does lightning um, does metal roofs attract more lightning? All right. Like that is a validated thing that we, um, we often hear from our, our clients. Um, you can also, Jesus, hold on. All types of technical issues here today. All right. You can also, um, again, use objections, um, things that clients have said to you that caused you not to get a job. All right. Make that into content. All right. Explain the story. Tell the story about it. Right. Explain um, before and afters, you know, explain, um, you know, anything that has some sort of interest or helps a customer make a decision. OK. Um, and then the cool thing is, is that let's say you have a customer that's maybe on the fence with you. OK. And, you know, their objection has been, you know, I'm I'm concerned about lightning hit, hitting my new roof. OK, cool. I've made content around that already. I'm going to tag them on it. All right. I'm going to use that content to actually help, you know, to do my follow up. Right. And this is where we get really, you know, it, it gets really interesting because the more you're driving your own traffic to it. All right. The more the algorithm is seeing that as value. All right. And remember, their whole priority is to keep people on the platforms. OK, so if you make content that people are interested in or that they watch the whole video through. All right. It's going to then feed that content to a bigger, broader audience. And that's how things start to go viral. Um, so just to let you guys, like, just in case you guys are unaware, um, how content's well, shared with most um, with most hold on. with most um, algorithms is they take your content whatever you're posting and they share it with people that have already liked your page. Okay. Let's say that you've got 500 people. So they're going to share it with 50 people. Okay. If they, if those 50 people like it, share it, if they, um, you know, they stay on it, they watch the whole thing, then it's going to feed it to a bigger audience. It's going to feed it to 200 people that aren't um, connected to your page, right? Two orga 200 organic pe uh, people. And you might see it on your post now where it says reach, right? It means that it's sharing it to a broader audience. Now, let's say that out of that 200 strangers, um, you know, a hundred of them really loved it and they watched the whole video. Well, now the algorithm will feed it to 500, a thousand all the way up. Um, so that's how we get our content to actually go viral. Does that make sense? Anybody have any questions so far? None? I have a silly question. Now, where, where exactly is this document again? It's not in oh. CAI, it's... No, it's, it I in... put it in the, the chat here. Hold, hold on. Oh, I didn't see it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a whole... Like, it's got documents inside of it. I don't want to give you guys a pile of documents. So it's oh, just there a step-by-step. Okay. Step. okay. So, now, um, this kind of... We talked about this a little bit last week. Um, but another great place to um, really start asking questions and finding out the things and figuring out who your audience is if you're not aware of it and what they're struggling with, what they're um, trying to solve um, is forms like Reddit, Facebook groups, okay? Easiest way, go to your local community Facebook group, all right? And um, ah. search your trade. So if you're an electrician, search electric electrician, all right? And just read what the people in the community are asking for. Read the questions that they're asking, right? And then answer them. Simple as that. Like that, you how much easier could you get? 
Um, and it's really like that. Now you become involved in that community Facebook group. All right. You're active. Um, you're becoming, a, you know, a scene member. And then next time somebody has a question around electrical, you're the expert already. All right. And I know guys that are blowing their businesses up doing it this way. Zero ad cost. Zero, you know, it, it's just time. Right. And again, we're not we're not spending money to generate that lead. It doesn't take much time. And if you're an outgoing person um, that likes to help people, that's a great place for you. Right. Same thing with um, Reddit. So Reddit, for most of you guys, like everything goes into Reddit. It's like the dark hole of stuff. All right. So I'll be honest with you. If I've worked with you, I've searched your stuff out on Reddit. All right. Hold on a second. Right. You, my, my daughter's intruding. She's uh, she's coming to be a star. Okay, so um, I want you guys to try this uh, if if you can. Um, log on to Reddit if you haven't got an account yet, all right? And search anything that you think your customer would ask, any question, right? And see what people are saying. See how they're responding, okay? Um, because that's going to make really good content. It's as simple as that, seriously. Like you go there, you find out what people are, are, are most concerned, and you repeat it back in those words, Right. So if somebody has, you know, 10,000 views for, you know, how do I change my breaker? Well, we just we made some really easy content that's going to scale. Right. It's going to get seen because there's a lot of people that have wondered about that. Right. And you validated that. So that can become very shortly um, a content pillar. All right. And we're going to talk about that in, in short in a quick second. So common questions to capture again you know what are those common questions we should always have these even if we're passing this on to a content creator why because for them to really understand you and your market and and your client all right it has to come from a place where we're 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 we're, we're connecting dots okay so most content creators is going to have no idea all right what a you know what a an electrical breaker is all right. Very few will anyways. Okay. And how does the, how does the customer's tone and voice, how do they explain it? Do they know what a breaker is or are they saying breaker box or box or like, how are they explaining it? How are they asking the question? All right. How educated are they? And that really gives you an idea is if they're problem aware, solution aware. All right. So a lot of guys, a lot of people will go to these platforms and ask the question, maybe you guys have done it yourself. They'll actually go there and be like, Hey, that, you know, steel thing in my basement is sparking. I've literally seen that. I'm like, yeah. And then you'll see people chime in. Yeah, that's your breaker box. You should probably call somebody, right? Like, or they'll be like, hey, you know, my, my upstairs thing or my, I've got a, a stain on my ceiling downstairs. All right. Yeah. You probably got a plumbing leak, right? So again, how that just became content. So instead of saying, you know, explaining how a leak is solved, right? Think about what your customer's thinking about. Why do I have this brown stain on my ceiling, right? That That's your content right there. That's the problem you're solving because you got to get down to the level of your customer. And a lot of times, I know I'm guilty. I know our clients are guilty. We're technician. We know our job inside out. We take that for granted, all right? People don't have a clue when we talk to them about technical stuff. Right. So if you're creating content around technical things, be prepared to have, you know, um, have a very quiet social media account because nobody nobody cares. Nobody knows what that is. Yeah. All right. So we want to bring it to the level that we can solve a problem for them. OK. Um, you know, another thing, you know, how do homeowners feel about recycling old roofing materials? Right. That's the question. All right. Potential solution. Create a video. Um compilation of homeowners te testimonials about recycling you know materials that were made easy featuring satisfied clients uh that share how successfully recycled their uh roofing this is total bullshit by the way like there's nobody that ever searched that i literally made that up and it sounds really dumb now that i'm thinking about it but um again when we look at sustainability which roofing materials are eco-friendly um and use biodegradable packaging okay Again, that might be like some of the questions that are being asked. And then we're going to create content around answering that question. And you can do it in a lot of different forms and different ways. You can do, you know, explainer videos. You can do memes. You can do like there's a million different ways to do it. All right. But again, start from where 
the questions being asked and make sure that you're, you're mimicking those questions. And that's going to get you a lot more reach with your social media. Hey, uh, I was hoping to oh. get a conversation with- Hold uh, on, hold on, hold on. Oh, there we go. Hey guys, if you're hey, going to- yeah. you know that link, that link, I don't, is that's what you're looking at? That's not what I, I mean, I have the one that you put up there, but why can I just, I cannot find what, what you're, what we're looking at here. Yeah. It's inside the, the, so if you go through this. Yeah. I, yeah, the, so, the link you put on. Yeah. So just click on here. That's all. Where? Where so at? yeah. Find it in the, in the page. Right. So if you come down to what page is this? Yeah. I can't find it in the page even. All right. Well, it's on. It's like a 3.1. I looked at 3.1. Sorry, guys, to get us off track. Yeah, no, no, no problem. So when you scroll down. Um, it's not the product matrix tool. It's a. No, 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 no. You're on the wrong. You're on the wrong booklet altogether. Pull the booklet. That's what I, I thought. That That's the yeah. link that you put in the chat. No, in the chat. Oh, did I? Maybe I did. Creating social media. No. I... Hold on. Oh, my God. Am I going crazy? Am I going crazy? D download that one for me. Oh my God. I don't know what I did. <laughs> okay. Just, did you get never it? Never mind. Sorry, guys. I got it. I got okay, it. Okay. Okay. No problem. All right. So um, now we're going to talk about what really, really matters for your content. All right. If you don't want to be a slave to content and you don't want to have it be a huge burden to you, I highly recommend that we be boring, all right? Just like our business, we need a system. We need a way of operating where it's not constantly having to come up with new or creative stuff, okay? Most of it you can reuse, repurpose, all right? But we have to have pillars, content pillars, okay? You're going to hear me say this quite a bit, but everything that I do um, is based on content pillars, all right? Even with Contractor AI, you'll notice my content has a strategy to it, right? There's pillars of content. There's, you know, like the lives, the memes, there's like... And we're mixing those up and reading the the feedback that we get, right? We post less of the things you guys don't like and more of the things you do like. But if I'm not looking at pillars and I'm not organizing my content, first of all, it's going to take me forever to do, all right? Because I'm just trying to come up with new ideas all the time, all right? I'm not going to be able to get anyone else to add their their pieces to it or have a collaboration, all right? And it's going to become a big burden and I'm just going to stop, all right? Because I won't have time. Like I've never heard this before, right? I don't have time. You guys don't have time now, all right? So one of the ways to really kind of get on top of this, and especially if you're working to delegate, is get your content pillars. Like this is the setup part. You can set this up and then you never have to explain it to somebody again. And they're going to be able to capture your brand and your image very quickly, all right? So very simply, content is the the type of content that you're comfortable producing, all right? So if it's customer testimonials, all right, cool. We know every, you know, pillar three is a testimonial of some sort. You're going to, you're going to capture a testimonial from your customer, whether it be Google or wherever. And we're going to make that a piece of content that we're regular, regular doing. And now that's going to tell the, the producer of the content, Hey, I got to get testimonials for this spot in the, in the calendar. Okay. Very, very kind of simple. And I'm going to show you how to use prompts and stuff. Once you've got these things in, that is going to generate your whole content calendar and give you all the ideas and stuff. But again, we got to really understand. And this can be infographics, quizzes, interviews. I mean, there's so many different types. Um, I believe there's over 100 that we've tracked, different types of content. Don't get it complicated. Think about your customer, right? What are they resonating with? What are they clicking on? What's got, you know, go go look at your competitors. Look at the content they're producing. Is it, you know, before and afters? Is it like what's getting what's getting action on their profiles? Okay? It's all open and right there for you to see. All right. So, pillars really really important. You'll see why when we get to the prompt um stage here, but um again, when we start to get a little bit further here, we want to think about our content format, okay? Um, and like I said, we're going to research our competitors. We're going to figure out, do short videos. Does anybody Is anybody aware of what short form content is? Have you heard that term before? Like a, okay. like a reel? Yeah. yeah, so a short form content is like a 15 to 20 second video, all right? Um, and they're very popular. So that's what's really like driving traffic right now. So your stories like in your Facebook feeds, your reels, stuff like that. Um, TikTok is basically all short form content, 
All right. Um, well, I want to say it all, but in, and basically it's this, um, they, 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 like a good example of it is like we do a live. Okay. It's 23 minutes long. I can't drive traffic to people like that. Don't know me to 23 minutes of listening to me. That doesn't work. Okay. Either will it work on your profile. So we have to be conscious of what do people want that will get their interest top of funnel. Okay. So that might be a, like a clip, no word of a lie. And um, actually Johnny uh, that we work with, with tile, um, tile, uh, tile Canada services. He's got millions of views on his uh, TikTok profile. He's much, much better at, at TikTok than I am. Um, and all of his videos are literally his guys working. That's it. That's all. The algorithm sees that people, other tile guys love that content. They love to just see tiles being set. Homeowners like to see tiles being set. It's satisfying, right? So he gets millions of views for his content and you guys can too. Like those are the kind of pieces you would want to include. Again, stupid things. Like I, I hate to say it, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to try and not rant too much here, but like I've lost a lot of faith in humanity as a result of being conscious of content. And what we actually watch, what actually gets seen is generally pretty like low, low level because people are in an entertainment phase, right? So again, think about something that's satisfying in your job. So Nick, for you, for example, right? That might be troweling a wall perfectly. Like that's it. That's a 15 second video. It takes you no time, no voice in it, no nothing. And you're just posting that with a with a call to action, right? That gets you pumped up in the algorithm. So it starts to feed it out to your wider audience. And now we're gonna follow that content up with what you do, all right? So again, we're gonna spike the algorithm, right? Short form, short form. And what we're trying to do is funnel people in, people that were maybe interested and they're gonna check out our profile and go, oh, this guy's a drywall guy. Oh, I see he's in Toronto. Great, I'm gonna give him a call. So TikTok right? would be worth it to open a TikTok account. Again, understand the platform. So TikTok is amazing for top of funnel. Amazing. Okay. Um, but understand that you will also be put in a category there where chances are like they're going to feed your content to millions of people all over the world that are interested in drywall or just silly people that just want to watch drywall get traveled on all day. So I, I'm uh, like, I'm a, I'm a direct response marketer. I'm my... I never try to go near like platforms or anything where I can't, I can't game it. Right. So it's a pure content platform. It means that um, people are very successful there. All right. But you, it's content driven. So it's quality. It's like, like I said, it's just these little things and it's more to me to be an influencer. Okay. If you want to be an influencer in your market, that's one thing. Okay. If you want to be a business that generates leads, that's a totally different thing. Okay. Don't get the two of them confused. You're not out there to be an influencer. There's no money in that. Okay. Believe me, we, you know, the, the lots of influencers out there are very broke. Okay. And we're there as a business for a business principle, like a business thing. Now that means you still can, you can still use it a little bit. All right. To your advantage. All right. But it's got to be followed up with like, what is it that I do? Why would people be on my page? I'd much rather have 200 really like interested prospects that are going to convert into leads than to have a million views. Make sense? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So would you just be make just kind of like a just do some TikToks and, and people were really interested, they will search my page or it's, I don't know how TikTok works. I have Yeah. No so again, if you get good at content and it becomes something that you get energy from, yeah, go there right? If you feel like your reels would get some attention, but understand, like, don't be disappointed with the results. So I'll give you the, the, the best way I can explain it. Go ask Johnny how many leads he's generating from his, his millions of follows. Zero, zero leads. Okay. Yeah. So, and again, I'm, I work with, I work with a um, parenting coach. She has hundreds of thousands, millions, like hundred million views can hardly sell a $47 product. Right. So again, influencers, we get the wrong impression with it. It's very, and this is why I'm getting you to do your research, understand the difference, right? There's a type of content that we're going to produce that gets people to, to download and see us as an authority to do that work. Okay. There's a type of content we're going to produce that reinforces our authority or builds trust with our audience. Okay. But it's not like, if you want to be an influencer, be an influencer, right? Up to you. Okay. But you're not going to generate 
as many leads as if you were to think about it from a lead production point of view. Is that is that kind of make sense? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, I don't want to be an influencer. No, I, and and I don't recommend it against it. But you can you can use some of their strategies. Like I said, if if you are doing it properly and you're doing it right, let's say you're running ads, okay? If you had that content and they see your 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 profile blowing up, they'll give you a lower cost per lead because you're going to keep people on the platform. So that's not that's a good example of being smart. We use memes a lot. Okay, so like memes are really meant to spike the algorithm. It's meant to like keep people on the page. So you're to the algorithm. It looks like you're you're popular is what I'm going to say. But really what that's going to do is it's going to lower your ad costs. Right. So you're targeting people very specifically, but you're lowering your ad cost with that influence, like with that content. Does that make a little more sense? Like a little bit clearer. So like what I run ads and we we're trying to spike the algorithm. Like we purposely post stupid stuff that has like, it doesn't like it's, it's meant to like just be stuff people are going to watch through so that my ad cost is lower. Okay. All right. So um, it, also deciding the frequency. So again, I want to bring this to everybody's intention. Um, the CRMs that we've got installed with all of our clients Wicked place to plan your content. So if, if you don't know this already, um, in Contractor AI, you can post across all the platforms in one post. Okay, so you can only you only have to make one piece of content. All right, and we can post it across multiple platforms. We can also use AI for captions and stuff like that. I I want you guys to all think about no matter what, no matter what, use the tools that are available to you. All right. If we have someone creating our content, we want to see that calendar. Why would it not be in the CRM? Why would it not be where we can track that marketing to see the results? And the cool thing is when you post it through there, I can see all the analytics from that content and help you to say, hey, this is working. That's not working. Um, so, you know, we'll we'll go through that if you guys if you guys want. Um, but we need to be using content calendars. OK, um, other tools, if you're going to be creating content. So for graphics. I recommend Canva. Okay. I don't know if anyone's here is using Canva. Again, it's a creator tool. Um, and it, it's for designs. Okay. So if you want to create your own designs, stuff like that, you could just use Canva. Um, it's going to help you do a whole bunch of things. Um, I'm running at a little bit at a time here. So um, next, we're going to really uh, talk about promotions. Okay. So let's say that you're posting your content, um, you get a, into a regular consistent feed of, of content. This is a great place to test your offers, okay? So rather than testing an offer in ads or rather than testing an offer, um, you know, the expensive way, you've got, even if it's a small audience, even if you have a hundred people, all right, you can do what we call a two-step post, all right? You guys might see them in Contractor AI where we ask a question, right? Or we offer something. Okay. And what I'm doing there is I'm figuring out what is people really interested? How many people put their hand up for this resource? Okay. You guys probably have all downloaded them. That's really just giving us data for more of what we need to produce and less of what you guys don't want. Right. But I did that in a way that gives value to you. All right. So if you've downloaded one of those resources or we've shared it with you, starts a conversation. Okay. Where we have a conversation with you one-to-one -to, -one to see how we can help you. All right. And again, it's validating the things that we're working on. So I, cause I could spend my time working on things that don't matter. Right. And what matters to me isn't necessarily what matters to the audience. It, I try to separate those two things. Okay. So you can use yours the exact same way. Even with a small audience, you can ask a question or provide a resource. Another good one is running a contest, right? Hey, you know, I'm giving away, you know, um, a handyman service, a one visit handyman service. Cool. All right. Um, people will respond to that. Okay. People will put their hands up for that. They'll, they'll tell you. Okay. Um, another really important thing. Um, and I'm going to say this to everybody here, respond to your damn comments, Nick, I'm looking at you. I, I'm looking yeah, at I you. Responded. I'm looking at you. If you, if you're having a problem with it, let us turn the AI on and we'll just respond to them, but do not let your comments not be responded to because the algorithm basically then puts you in the lowest class and you'll never get your ads to scale. Okay. Cause it's basically saying you're not engaging the audience. It's very, very important on these platforms that we're creating engagement. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the notification are back on. I, they're yep. all replied to even the dumb ones. 
Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's important, right? We just do that. It becomes a, a common practice. Um, so contest polls, Q and a think engagement. All right. Engagement, super, super important. So you can see here, I'm giving away a buyer's guide and a checklist. I'm asking people to do something. Do you want this metal roofing buyer's guide and checklist? <laughs> right. Rather than just throwing it out there. And of course, here comes my ideal customer. Oh yeah. I'm, well, why would they need that, uh, that, that, buyers got in checklists. Well, they must be thinking of metal roof. Most people don't go download stuff they don't need, right? So that now opens up dialogue in a conversation to set a lead, all right? And we do it all the time. So we're just like, hey, yeah, here's the resource. Can I ask, you know, what area are you working in? Would you be interested in getting a quote? Yeah, absolutely. All right, here's this guy actually saying, I'm, I'm in the market for a new steel roof. Perfect. Right, right there in the comments. It doesn't get easier than that. That's organic content, right? Okay. Um, the other thing that we want to try and work on is creating mentions. So, like when people mention your your business, um, friends, family, customers. That's really <laughs> that's really good. If you're working, if you're using um Facebook groups, okay, getting other people to mention you will be very very powerful for your your, your whole opportunity. All right. So again, when you're in those, those Facebook groups, which I challenge you all to go look at a community Facebook group, they have ones for contractors. They have ones like, look at those and they're, they're a gold mine. All right. Um, if I, um, if I, if I fit those markets, I'll, I will get in those community groups too. Right. Um, but again, for a lot of guys that are, are maybe offering electrical services or home services or handyman services, gold mine, right. Drywall gold mine, right? There's people there like looking for you, right? And they'll come to the community page and ask the community who they would recommend. So you want to be the one they mention. You want to be the one that they're, they're influenced by, right? And it's pretty easy in these groups just by being consistent with your content. And I mentioned that you don't need to just post your content on your page. You post it in these groups, you share value, right? I'm going to go to a community group and be like, Hey, you know, if anyone's thinking about getting a new metal roof, here's a checklist before you hire a contractor. Would that be helpful? Perfect. Just let me know. Cool. There you go. Right. We've got a conversation now. Now they see me as a trusted story. Even if they don't go with me next time, somebody asks the question, they're going to, they're going to mention me. You see how that works. Okay. Um, so the last thing we'll uh, we'll kind of get covered here. I, I I made this way too in depth. So there's a whole bunch more to this, but um, we want to uh, be going into this really uh, making sure that we understand a you know what it's not all um, rainbows and butterflies. People are assholes, especially on the internet. Um, you need to be prepared for that. I'm going to say that right out. So again, comments. People talk negatively in them. All right. There's a lot of negativity, a lot of trolls, stuff like that. Um, super important that you're, you're addressing them. Um, most of the time you can hide them, but you have to, you, you know, you have to remain, you know, professional. And, and if you don't think about these things ahead, especially if you have someone else responding or an AI on how a response should come in. And if you're not really looking at, you know, the, in, at least the initial ones, you're going to get caught off guard and somebody's going to make you look silly. Right. Um, and like I said, at first it hurt my feelings, but now I'm just like, ah, whatever. Right. I get trolled all the time. It's like no, no problems whatsoever. So again, just understand that it's not personal. It's just people have nothing better to do with their time. And, you know, when they can hide behind a computer, it's, it's pretty easy, right? Don't let that uh, be anything that deters you about creating content. All right. Um, also, you know, you want to have a risk mitigation plan. I'll let you guys go through that. Um, you know, and this applies to other areas of your business. I always want to cover the last really, really important thing that um, near and dear to my heart is making sure that we're looking at our analytics. Okay. Can't stress it enough. And if you don't understand it, um, I'll be sharing a prompt with you that can help you to analyze those, uh, those analytics. There's like huge data there. That's going to give you again, indication on how to market. It's like, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. But if you're not actually going through it methodically and 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 taking that information, it's like doing job costing, but never looking at it, right? It's right there for you. Like the answer is right there. That's going to save you time, make you more money, right? But if you don't take the, make the effort to actually review it, um, you're not going to get the results that you're you're expecting. Okay, 
Real quick, does anybody have any questions uh, regarding what I've shared so far? You guys look a little overwhelmed. It was a lot. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> I got a question. Yes, sir. Um, is there a way to sort of learn how to do to do all the postings and everything else on all these social media platforms? 110%. So we're a great resource. Um, I was trying to get to the prompt that I built for um, – for you guys to use so like when you get your pillars and you get your content like if you were to go through this particular exercise and just like just do the steps all right what it leads to here is i built you guys a prompt that's going to break your content down right so it brings it down into your pillars all right and it's going to tell you your posts all right they're we use the mm -hmm. word in the in the information um i can then feed those sheets in and create a prompt that every week you get you know your your titles and we know they're optimized. We know that they're going to resonate with your audience. That's the cool thing about it. Like AI properly done. If you collect the initial information and go through it, you only have to do it once and maybe update it. Well, you, that's a lie. You'll have to do it maybe four times a year and update it. And bang, we've got all of our prompts. You approve these. Now somebody creates your con, like creates your graphics. You're done, right? Posts it in your CRM. It's like, it's not a lot of work. We can do these posts in 10 minutes. You know what I mean? Like, it's not a big deal. You can use other AI, like um, image captures. Like there's a lot of stuff we, we're not going to get into on this particular call, but like, again, AI made all of this content um, for you, which is, is, is good for what you're trying to do. Right. So now we can just go in, add our graphics and away we go. Um, it literally can become like a two or three hour a month job. And the results of that are going to be huge, right? They're going to be, they're going to have a lot of return for you. Does that answer yeah. your question? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I just kind of like I've done a post here and there way back, but yep. I honestly forgot how to do it. To, like a week later, I forget how to do it. How yeah, to so post or how to post. Uh, like you know how some are really good at the reels, the, yep. the little yep. uh, clips that change scenes or all the time, mm -hmm. and they put music in it or whatever. Like yeah, so that's something that again, I I would. Like we have a video editor. If you want to create that kind of content, get like work with a team. There are most good con like creators and influencers out there are they're not doing it themselves, right? A lot of right. them is done. So if you're like like I said, this is um, everybody has access to this with this with the software. Like you can post to all of your platforms, right? If you're looking for consistency, you can use the AI. So we can generate AI content. All right. You might put in a video caption. You're going to use Canva if you want to do it yourself. You can use Canva and cut in clips and stuff. Okay. So Canva is a, like the most practical tool, tool to use for this um, with the lowest uh, learning curve. How would we use Canva with that? I mean, I don't even know. Yeah. I've got to look yeah. at a tutorial or something. Yeah. So Canva, and I mean, if I'm using it and I'm not a very creative person, um, Oh, what did I get? I just need to know like the steps is what yeah. is confusing me. Oh. Yeah, give me one sec. Oh. I opened something. Hold on. Jesus. I just got hit with their marketing. Give me one second here. Okay. I'll show you my camp account here. Um, Anybody have other uh, other questions while we're um, while I'm digging this up for us? Uh, where do I see the analytics from the post? So I found the social planner. I yep. see post, and where do I see the analytic there? Give me one second and I'll show you. Okay. So guys, this is Canva. So for this workbook, for example, or am I sharing my screen still? No. No. Okay. Uh, okay. All right, so this is this is Canva. All right, so it allows you to make captions, videos. Like I can cut all of these things in and out. 
um, we can do videos, but what I like about it is like, I can brand things. All right. So something like an image. All right. We would take, maybe we'll take an ad for example. Okay. An ad can now become a video. All right. So Canva allows you to create these things in video and they use like an AI to actually generate some of the, the video content. So I can put this into an entire reel and play it like a video. Right. I can change my brand. Like, let's say it's, you know, an image that I found, I can actually brand the colors to it. Right. I, I, I don't want to get too far into this, but And we can do some other classes on just Canva. Um, but again, like I said, this is where the easiest platform, if you're trying to generate content and they have the template. So let's say you're trying to generate a reel. Okay. You can just come in, create a design and say, I want Instagram reel. We say it, Instagram reel. There we go. Okay. So it's going to create the right size for it. Okay. I'm going to upload... Whatever video I have, so let's just say I put that video. Oh, that's not a video. Whatever video that I've got here. There we go, videos. And you create it in Canva and then put the link in. Nope. You just, yeah, you can oh, link it or download it. It can post directly to it. It's There's lots of ways to work it, right? So, I mean, I could take this video. I can cut it. I can edit it. I can do just about anything. This is... Again, a lot of a lot of creators use this, um, and this is how they're generating their posts, right? There's a whole bunch of, I mean, you can put elements, all types of things in here. Maybe we'll do a whole class on just th this particular thing because I could go on and on. I'm not really going to do it any justice, but that would right? be great. So, like, I do a plat background, right? Post my video, so like it becomes interesting, right? And now, look, it's going to play the the video. And I can have it on my background or whatever. Like you can make content really that like that easily, that quickly. And then they do have an AI that will like adjust all the images. So you basically can throw everything in as a collage and it's going to rearrange it. And it, it, you know, helps you to create it yourself. Okay. Still time consuming, no guarantees. Right. So like, you know, if this is something you want to just understand, I recommend that, like understand how, how it works, but As soon as you do, you don't want to get caught doing it, right? It's just not, it's not worth it. Um, I know I've certainly tried um, and it's just, it doesn't, it never adds up and it's not my passion, right? It's not what gives me energy. So um, for other guys like Trevor, I can see you being an influencer, dude, for sure. Just create videos, right? Just create content, anything that you can. And that's what we want from our customers. Like, I don't care if it's, you know, off, off top, we can recut those videos and make them into something, right? Especially if we know your pillars, then we can, we can go in and create really, you know, um, interesting videos with all the sounds and everything else. And again, that's a professional, like that's a graphic artist that's doing that, right? We have content creators, you know, that have worked on your, your things. Those are like, they've gone to school for that. They've, they've worked at those things. Don't expect that you're just going to jump on and like, bam, you know, I'm a, I'm an instant star, right? It, it does take, um, it does take effort on that end. But if you want to try and play with it, Canva, get a free account, pretty good. Um, and I'll be sharing with you guys the prompt as well for creating your pillars that on its own huge, right? Just, you know, making sure that everybody's connected on what the content plan is making sure if you're using multiple agencies, like I, you know, there's all types of different situations here that your team's at least like got a say in it, right? Like top of top of level of what, what that content's looking like. Um, whenever we post content for our clients, um, it's always approved by them, right? So we don't post anything goes into the platform and they approve it from there. Okay. Any questions before we get wrapped up here? No. Okay. Hopefully that wasn't too much. I'll, uh, I'll be sharing the, the uh, resources as well shortly. I got a couple more cool things coming up with this while we're still on this topic. All right. Have a wonderful Thanks day. Thanks very much, Jay. Those are good. Guys. Yeah, no problem. Bye, guys. See you, Jay. Bye.